Hey guys, how's it going? Tess back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One and it's time to decide the future of Mario Balotelli. Last week we received this offer, £62.5 million for the Italian striker. I just can't bring myself to accept it. He's so important to our team right now. I just, I have to reject it. We need him to be our main striker, our talisman for the team, and to lead us forward in this opening season. We'll we will readdress the situation in the summer should we get a larger offer and or have the opportunity to bring in some strikers of similar ability for uh, perhaps a little bit less than the the, uh, the money we'd sell Mario for. And then Bayern Munich come in with an offer, but it's only, only quote-unquote, £44.5 million. So we do reject that one as well. And uh, there's a bid for uh, for Rubinho on deadline day as well, but uh, I'm not letting him go, at least not until the end of the season. So uh, he's going to stay for the uh, for the rest of the year as well. But uh, other than that, deadline day wasn't really that uh, wasn't really that eventful. Sirigu went from PSG to Juventus, and uh, Mario Mandzukic went from Bayern Munich to Roma, and they were the only real two deals of any particular note that you might say actually that's a pretty good signing. Sirigu to um, Juventus is clearly a Buffon replacement, and uh, you would say that Mario Mandzukic to Roma is maybe a uh, a Totti replacement potentially. But as you can see, there was a total of eighty million pounds spent in Serie A in this particular window, so a decent amount, but. Uh, it was all more of, uh, you know, 2 million here, 3 million there. I mean, we spent a little bit ourselves as well, bringing in a few players. So uh, we jump into the first game of the episode. There will be uh, only two games today again, because we'll have a squad report at the end. But we'll be back up to three games an episode now that we are outside of a transfer window. But as you saw, we're third in the table at the minute. So we need to make sure that we maintain a winning run if we possibly can. Because it's so very tight still at the top of the table. There's five of us up there just scrapping for those European spots. And it could go either way when it comes to uh, to the end of the season. And uh, going either way, Rubinho went the wrong way when it came to uh, taking that snapshot. And it went the wrong side of the post, unfortunately, with the opening chance of this game against Torino. They played quite a good game against us last time. We were able to come out with a win, I think, if her memory serves me correctly. But... We needed to make sure we were in some good form. And unfortunately, one of the first things that happened in the game, in the first half at least, which was pretty boring, uh, Kevin Constant picks up an injury. It's a sprained knee, and I have to bring on uh, Mattia Ciccilio on at, uh, at left back. As you could potentially have seen from the stats here, if you didn't see, we'd had three shots. We'd had 64% possession. Torino was so hard to break down, it was ridiculous. They just sat there with that bank of four, another bank of four, and uh, then the uh, the centre forward, they kept dropping in as well. So it was kind of like a 4-5-1 defensively. It was really hard to uh, to get through. Fortunately, El Suari in the second half gets inside with a cheeky uh, you know, step over inside. And uh, oh, you guys told me to finesse with Stefano El Suari rather than try and blast it. And what does he do when he gets that chance? He finesses it into the bottom corner. He does the apology celebration. And if anything, it should be me apologising to him for underestimating him and perhaps using him in uh, the wrong way when it comes to taking shots. In exactly in that way, I uh, fell back into uh, into old habits there, found myself one on one and decided to absolutely smash it. It didn't work. I should have finessed it. We'll see how things go between now and the end of the season with El Shirawi. But unfortunately, we pick up another injury in the second half. It's this time to Sully Montari. And again, it's a sprained knee. And now we have to bring on, I think I go for Adel Raps just to make sure that uh, Polly and uh, Montelivo maintain a little bit of, uh, of extra fitness because the uh, the second game in the episode, which isn't too long after this one, is uh, is actually pretty, pretty important. So uh, I wanted to make sure that we had enough fresh players for that game because it's huge. So uh, Terraps comes on in. He's involved straight away, as you can see, playing the ball down to Alexander Lacazette. Plays a beautiful ball into Rubinho, and the volley is really, really well saved. Lacazette picks up on the rebound, goes for the turn, and he should finish that. I know it's on his left foot, I know he's got pressure, I know it's raining, the ball's slippery, but he should be finishing that opportunity. You can see how much of the goal he's got to aim at there. I was really disappointed in Lacazette there. He, uh, he's been very, very good for us so far this season, but he does have that mistake. Not necessarily a mistake, but he does have that lack of clinical ability in him right now. But he's a young, up-and-coming, uh, you know, future superstar. So you have to kind of let him off with that. But fortunately, 
We weren't able to come out with a 1-0 win, so it didn't matter. And this time we get away with uh, not having that clinical ability up top. Thanks to Stefan al uh lovely little finesse shot into the bottom corner. But both of the injured players will be out for four weeks with their sprained knees. Sully Mutari and Kevin Constant. So we head into the next game of the episode, which is against Lazio. Away from home in the semi-final of the Coppa Nazionale. Now, I, what I didn't know at this particular time was the fact that the semi-final in the Coppa Nazionale is actually two legged I, uh, I didn't know that because every single game so far in this uh, in this competition has been over a single game and at the semi-final and it, I think the finals over two legs as well I might be completely wrong that I probably am but I'm so I swear I remember reading somewhere or seeing somewhere on like Sky Sports Score Center or something that the finals played over two legs. I may be I may be completely wrong, but anyway, Lazio came close to hitting the uh, the bar with the opening effort of the game, and they were on top of me in these early stages. As you can see, Conco plays the ball into Helder Bostiga, who volleys the ball into the back of the net with a fantastic finish. But fortunately for us, he's clearly offside. It's a really good defensive line there, actually. You're seeing that again, a really solid straight back line, a great uh, defensive line, real good communication between the four of them to step up, play the man offside. And uh, we were able to, uh, you know, to get that goal chalked off. But Honda came close there with a lovely left footed shot. Unfortunately, uh, it was actually Marchetti making a great save. But that was all for the first half. It was a bit disappointing again, perhaps the conditions playing a part in that. But uh, the second half was magnificent. It was definitely one of the best 45-minute spells that we've had so far in this career mode. Giovanni Dos Santos shows phenomenal feet there to twist and turn away from three or four defenders. Plays the ball into Poly, drives to the line, stands it up, and Honda wins the header to power the ball into the back of the net just before the hour mark to give us a 1-0 lead. And that was the catalyst for what was to come for the rest of the half. As you can see, Lazio trying to play the ball out just 10 minutes later. They're actually going to make a mistake. It's a heavy touch from the defender, Mario Balotelli, breaks in I was wary that uh, there was a man in front of me there that was going to get in the way and uh, cause me to either hit it off him or you know actually just get in the way of the shot and be played offside but pff, Mario doesn't need there's just nothing to worry about when it comes to Mario Balotelli that is an absolute steel Reich wonderful hit from him really clean connection with the outside of his right foot into the top left hand corner we will watch that all three times it actually goes between man and arm as you can see here just there almost perhaps hitting uh, hitting the defender on the arm and maybe we would have got a, a penalty for that if he was in the box i can't remember that's uh, weird <laughs> how bad is my memory that clip was like three seconds ago and i can't remember whether he was in the box or not anyway it doesn't matter we're tuning up i made a couple of changes ringing off honda for, for adult to wrap and also bringing on Erby Emanuelson for uh, for Matteo De Cilio. and uh, we push on into the last ten minutes now. Barrio, Barrio, Mario Balotelli down the uh, down the right hand side plays the ball into Terrapt. Wonderful first time touch, great finish as well to uh, to give us a three 0 lead and a comfortable look. Now I'm not sure whether away goals count in this uh, double legged semi final. I would presume that they do. So hopefully this will stand us in good stead because Mario is going to pick up his second of the game, our fourth, and we're going to end up running out with a massive, massive scoreline and a phenomenal win because Lazio are a very, very good side, actually. One of the best sides that we've played so far this season that aren't necessarily there and thereabouts when it comes to the top of the table. But, um, you know, I was pleased, let's say, to uh, to definitely get that first leg out of the way and in such positive circumstances. So uh, we're going to end this episode with a, uh, with a squad report. You guys have been asking for it recently. And since we've just come out of the transfer window, it seems right that uh, you know, we catch up and see how everyone is getting on. So if you want to see anyone in particular, their stats, then feel free to, uh, to pause the video at any particular point because uh, I'm just going to let it run in the background whilst they say thank you very much for, uh, for 7.3 thousand subscribers. We've got 7,300 of you plus now. Uh, we may even have hit 7,400 by the time you see this video. I'm not entirely too sure. It depends how the uh, the weekend goes. But you guys have been showing phenomenal support for the channel. Almost every single video has gone over 100 likes in the past week or so, which is absolutely superb. It shows how well the channel is doing and uh, how consistent your support is and how much the uh, the channel is growing in a positive fashion. So I cannot thank you enough. And the the, uh, the thanks has to go directly to you guys. Uh, you know, I, if you guys didn't consistently support the uh, the channel the way you do, we wouldn't be growing in the manner that we are, and uh, the videos wouldn't be going down as well as they currently are. So 
uh, you know, it, it really is you guys that make this channel what it is and uh, make me want to make the uh, the best quality content for you on a daily basis. So thank you to you guys for that again. But that's all for this video. Uh, I will just say, uh, like, again, try, maybe we could uh, hit 100 likes on this one for uh, for like an eighth or ninth day in a row. That'd be absolutely wonderful. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, then feel free to do so. There would be a link as an annotation in the top right hand corner of your screen. And of course, links in the description and the normal subscribe button as well and feel follow feel follow feel free to follow me on twitter as well at chesnoy gaming there will be a link to that in the description as well but uh, that's going to bring this one to a close guys I'm just going to leave the squad report playing on your uh, on your screen for the next 15 to 20 seconds or so but uh, thank you very much for watching i will see you tomorrow with some more career mode